when you're distracted by your environment and you got your cell phone and you're <clears throat> tweeting and you're Instagramming and Facebook and whatever people do, you're distracted by that feeling. But I now know that if you take a person and you say, okay, close your eyes, <laughs> sit in the, in the silence of any external stimulation, remove the environment, sit your body down like an animal, body is the animal, tell it to stay. I'm gonna feed you, you can check your cell phone, you can shower, you can have your coffee, but when I say, and so then here comes the challenge, right? So, and, and then if you say then, you're not gonna live in the familiar, fut- uh, familiar past or predictable future, you're not gonna think about how long you've been meditating, what you gotta do, you, you labor uh, for that present moment. People think when they do this that they're doing something wrong because there's such discomfort that comes with it but they're in the unknown, they're actually doing it right. People say, I think I'm meditating wrong. I always say, oh, no, 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 you're doing it right because when you notice that your body wants to get up and check your cell phone or have a cup of coffee and you become aware that it's on autopilot and wants to do that and you say, "Uh uh-uh, come on over here and you return it back to the present moment, you're executing a will now that's greater than the program and if the person's wants to just get angry while they're sitting there there's an arousal and they notice the body is amping up and revving up and they settle it back down now they're telling the body it's no longer the mind that they're the mind now we've researched this and it's tedious in the beginning at first because david is fighting goliath but if you keep practicing it just like training an animal sooner or later the body acquiesces sooner or later the body is trained to a new mind and when that happens there's a liberation of energy the body goes from particle to wave from matter to energy and there goes that emotion literally liberated from the body as energy so the person who has the strong emotion to some circumstance in their life and they're they're working and lowering the volume of that emotion the more they lower the volume of that emotion, the more they're going to take their attention off that person and problem, and they're going to take their power back. There's going to be a break in their attention from that circumstance. And now they build their own field. And now there's energy to heal. Now there's energy to create a new life. Now there's energy for the mystical moment because they've overcome their old personality self. So I think, you know, it's not like thinking positively. That's yeah, not no, the message. No, no. Yeah. It's, it's overcoming, 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 overcoming until we become somebody else. And when that occurs and the person starts thinking differently and they start acting differently and they start feeling differently, they're a new personality and they, they start seeing those synchronicities and serendipities. Now, crossing that river of change, the creative process now gets exciting because what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What kind of attention and intention do you want to place so that that becomes the loudest voice in your head Mm -hmm. and if you keep practicing it the hardware becomes a software program and it'll say jay you can do anything (laughs) jay uh, you live in no time and accomplish everything jay you're unlimited you just got to hang with it on the other side of this is greatness whatever you want to program in there you get the program in there if you sat down and say how am i going to be with my wife my husband my partner how am i going to be with my kids how am i going to be at work with my coworkers? how am i going to be in traffic and you close your eyes and you begin to rehearse in your mind if you're truly present the brain does not know the difference between the real life experience and what you're imagining so now the brain goes from a record of the past to a map to the future now you're installing the hardware keep practicing it it becomes automatic it becomes easier now it's a software program you may just start behaving differently and then if you said, well, listen, I'm not going to wait for my healing to feel gratitude. I'm not going to wait for my new relationship to feel love. I'm going to actually teach my body emotionally what that future feels like before it happens. Now, this is a big turnaround for a lot of people because we're so reliant on the outer world to change our inner world, right? And waiting and postponing. And waiting is not creating. I mean, period. And when people are, they could have the greatest intentions in the world. But if they don't combine that with an elevated emotion, there's no signal. Because the elevated emotion is the carrier, it's the energy that carries the thought. So then, when we're in separation, in lack, waiting for our wealth to feel abundance, we're basically living our whole life Mm -hmm. in pain, right? Mm -hmm. So then, if you reason this, and a person can get up from their meditation, and they literally feel differently, and they're 
feeling the emotions of their future before it happens. This is turning the, the, the whole process around. They can't be looking for it. Why would they be looking for it if they felt like it, they, it already happened? Now there's no separation. Now this is when those serendipities and coincidences and opportunities begin to show up in people's lives. So it's work, but then when they start seeing the experience in their life, all of a sudden they start believing they're more of the creator of their life yeah. and less of the victim of their life. 